Hi, Carol here. Warm welcome. Here's my milk acrylic, uh, I think it's called buttercream, and I turned them all upside down so that the goodness could fall to the top. I didn't know how many colors I was going to use. That's my stir stick, a 9 by 12 inch canvas. It's a material canvas actually. And my sister dropped this off to me because I wanted to uh, well, she didn't drop it off because I wanted to do this project, but I wanted to have three gifts to give away for my 10,000 subbies. Thank you, everybody, who have made that possible. To every single subscriber, I really do appreciate you, and I keep you in mind every time I put a project up. So what I did here today is, which is really funny, I'm showing you that this is where you put your paints on this uh, paper. It's kind of like a palette and uh, in paper form. <laughs> but what I want to tell you, I could have made this a short video. Yes, I could have if I only put in the final portion. But I wanted you to see how you can take a canvas and get three different looks. I did not use the first look that I actually created and I did not use the second look that I created. But I wanted you to see those in case you want to repli replicate them because they're beautiful. It's not that, yeah, I'm going, okay, okay, what am I going to do now? <laughs> but I start out, I'll talk to you a little bit later here on my uh, method of madness. So I used just some folk art white to prepare the surface because this is material-like. Um, so I knew I had to give it a good coat because, and I wanted to use crackle. That's another thing. I wanted to crackle the paint. So you know, like any project, you sit down. I did not have colors picked out for it. I just knew I wanted to do a mixed media piece to give away. So I begin to finish up, get the canvas. I didn't have much of this white acrylic paint left. I was using the bottle right at the bottom. But I did manage to get it all complete and I decided really, I decided to go out of my comfort zone. I really did. And this is the buttercream crackle. I love it. I got this in the States at Joann's. It's a beautiful product and so are the acrylic paints that I use. And they're soft acrylics. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. They don't uh, come up to a peak. They're not really thick. They're a thinner consistency but very vibrant. So I'm giving it a generous coat, and you're not going to believe it, but I decide to go with this beautiful um, candy apple red. Now, I, you very seldom will see me do anything. Oh, yeah. Hello. Yes. I'm so happy. Yeah, this is a happy tutorial. Be able to give something away. So in this buttercream, look at that candy apple red. You couldn't get anything more candy apple red, but it is right out of my comfort zone. So I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll put this on here. I'll put a frame around it by just drizzling the um, paints because they are, um, it's hard to say the consistency of them. They're not really thick bodied, but they are creamy. How's that? And look at that. I mean red. It's so funny because my mom always said I looked good in red because I guess I'm blonde, but I would never wear it. Here I'm trying to get the crackle up. You can see it coming through in there, but it will really crackle up later when we add more layers of paint. So I wanted to keep this in in case you like red and in case, you know, you want to do a painting and you want the uh, backdrop to be in a vibrant red. And then you want an idea to what to do around the edges. I'll show you what I did. Isn't that beautiful crackle? I love this stuff. Now, generally I stand at the island to create when I create. But this, <laughs> this was staring back at me. I said, oh my, I've got to sit down. <laughs> so after I got done heat setting it, I sat down right here. I just thought, oh boy, I just really have to concentrate on this. So I took my stir stick. I get these at the Chinese restaurants. You know how they give them to you, two in a pack? And I don't use them, so I ask if I can bring them home, and they don't care. So I bring them home for stir sticks. So if anybody's looking for stir sticks, go grab some Chinese for dinner, and you'll love it because they just wipe off. You put them away. 
So here I drizzled gray. It's called gray stone. It's beautiful. I really liked it. And then I thought, okay, I am going to grab my pouncer here. This is a uh, Martha Stewart, I think, pouncer. I'm not even sure, but it's wooden. I got it somewhere, probably a thrift store. Well, now that I pounced it, I can't see the drizzle, so I took a darker shade after I heat set it and just started to layer. And you know, I do like this. I was going to paint actually some, uh, I was going to use my, uh, I was going to do roses. Let me back up. I was going to do roses using the palette knives and do palette knife, knife, you know, pink and white roses. So that's kind of what I had in mind here. So I grabbed some darker shade. I opened up another one because most of these aren't opened. I got them last year. Gave it a stir and then they're so um, sticky creamy. That's what I like to say. That's why they drizzle so beautifully. You could almost drizzle it. Well, I did in some cases right out of the bottle. It just comes out in such a nice thin consistency. I think you'll really love these buttercream um, acrylic paints and anyway so I gave it some more which adds texture yes th this will be a gift so I am doing the gift thing here and now I'm back to heat setting it and wondering now what <laughs> okay so you know if you're gonna do some roses Carol you better get your stuff out because and then I didn't know whether to do it sideways like this so I thought you know what I'll do I, I set, uh, I was going to do some um, yellow uh, pansies, no peonies, but you can't do peonies on colors, you know, you need a white background to do yellow, because I wanted to do yellow, and you can't put yellow on this dark, you need to have an underlay of white, so uh, I thought, all right, uh, I ran out of the white, so I'll try the yellow and the peony flower all the way around. So I started to do that because I look at, can you believe how much I put out there? And then I didn't like it. Yes, I didn't like it. So I thought, okay, let's go down to plan. I don't know. This must have been plan H. <laughs> okay, let's go with plan C. And I thought, all right, I'm going to use texture. You know, I love texture. I all my mixed media has, um, uh, you know, stacks of texture. I, I really like the look. So I grabbed the gray and the black. And then I, at the top on the right there, that's gold. That's folk art gold. And I, I put that out there. So I started going around. I only wanted to do the left side first to see if I, you know, really liked the gray. And I did. I liked the gunmetal look of it. Like, yeah. You know, I ride a Harley gunmetal. Ooh, yeah, this is sweet. Oh, here I go. I'm going with that. So, yes, I'm showing you that again. <laughs> um, the thing about it is, I'm using my gold and black and white heavy bodied. They're the only two heavy body acrylic paints I own. I'm telling you, I have to get some of that golden in colors because I love to do acrylic. Uh, paintings and I like to use my palette knives to do flowers and one stroke flowers and leaves is really nice but I own black and white in the heavy body because you can't do anything that has any type of texture or 3D look with acrylic paints that are more runny especially roses see that perfect timing wasn't it so I go around and I'm making sure that the white kind of flicks out kind of like a background. I'm showing you the texture. Isn't it lovely? You get that uh, drizzle texture, you get the pouncing texture, and you get the crackle. You can't ask for anything more. Can you? I don't I don't think so. So <laughs> yeah, this is a really relaxed video. Oh look at how that look at how that came about. I love that. Yeah, we could all paint like that, right? So anyway, this process is to show you how you can go from something that you aren't comfortable with with that red for me and I don't think white roses would have even looked good on red with black there's something about the gunmetal black you know if I had a hand drawn a Harley in there 
Yes, I could have kept it, but I didn't think anybody would want that for a gift. So I wanted to, you know I'm the, what colors I'm going, can you even guess the colors I'm going to be drawn to? Just, just for fun, take a guess what I change all of this to. That's kind of fun. Here I wanted to add more of that gold. That folk art gold is absolutely beautiful. It just has a soft shimmer of sparkle in it. Uh, next time at Michael, I'm at Michael's, I am going to pick another one up because it is beautiful. It, it, it just, it's so opaque, but yet it has, you know, it, it does make a statement and I do like it. So if you're at Michael's and you see this gold folk art paint, I, I suggest you pick it up now. Can you believe this? T tell me, what was I thinking when I put the yellow out there? I guess the look of clouds on this made me think of the sun. I don't know. But if the red wasn't there, now, if you put your hand over the screen and you covered that red, the yellow on this is nice. Believe it or not, it does look nice. But it's that red that's throwing me off. I used to tell my mom that all the time. Mom, I just don't like red. It's just, it's so out there, you know. And uh, she'd say, no, it's really nice, Carol. You know, you should wear more red. And I do now, you know. But um, not often. Not often. It's one of those bright, I'm more pastel. Yeah, I am. Yeah, get out there. So drizzle. Now, here's where I start to change things up. I grab, this is like a, a pink, a, the softest pink ever and I drizzle it on there I just take it and drizzle it love that look and I thought okay pour some out there and cover that with pink let's go with black gold and pink now I really liked this I have to admit when this gets finished here I liked the pink however I knew it needed a lot of pink to cover up red and I wanted more drizzle. I started to really get excited about this, you know. And uh, I was grabbing it from that little, that bigger blob there just to use it up because I didn't want it to not dry. And look at this. This is fine. This is pouring it right out of the bottle. And look how that drizzles so crazy fine. Oh, I just started to fall in love with this project. So I thought, I can deal with that. I can, I can deal with this look. And then the crackle's going to show through on this um, paint. And you can kind of see, if you look carefully, how um, it's creamy, yet it has a shine to it on this acrylic. You'd almost think it was uh, an oil, but it isn't. It is an acrylic paint. And now I'm watching all of that crackle come through. And it's coming through that red, which is amazing, once you start drying it. And I love to leave the heat tool on till it bubbles, because the bubbles gives you more texture. And look at the drizzle on the gold, and with the drizzle on the underneath the black and gray. Yeah, I'm really starting to like this, and I'm starting to relax. And... You know, I thought of even standing up to finish it, but I kind of was comfortable in my chair. So I thought, there we go. Look, tell me this isn't nice. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love this drizzle. And I love these buttercream paints that you buy at, uh, it was Joann's in Buffalo. Love it. And then I grabbed a little bit of black on my brush just to wipe it through so it wasn't so clean looking because it is mixed media, right? and I start to dry it. I want it to be completely dry uh, for whatever else I'm thinking I'm going to do with it. And I really was going to stick with this, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, can you believe it? This would have made a beautiful mixed media painting for a child's room. So look what I did. I started to paint upwards with a uh, uh, little bit of white I did have left no, I used the white uh, acrylic, the thick, heavy body from Golden. Then I added some gold down at the bottom. I was going to do this on each side, and then I didn't like it. That, don't do that. I didn't like it. Yeah. I turned it sideways. I thought, okay, could I come up with a plan sideways? Nope. So out came my palette knife, and I thought, okay, 
I'll just add a little bit here and there and we'll go with, I mean, what's not sweeter than pink and turquoise? Beautiful. And uh, I thought, yeah, I, I kind of like that too. Which one do I like better? All right. That's what I was thinking. So I started to mix up and I'm going <laughs> in. Yeah, I poured it on my palette and I thought, no, we're going turquoise. The pink, the black, the gold, yummy. And I wanted it to look like script paper in the back, like just like a piece of script paper for some reason. Well, that's what was in my mind. And uh, I wasn't looking to center it, nothing. I just knew I wanted to cover it up. I wanted to heat set it. And I think you're really going to like what happens next. Now, I made sure I added quite a bit of this paint because I knew the crackle would really do its job with more acrylic paint on top and you'll see that as I am drying it here. I come in close so you can see the actual crackle of it. Now it takes some pretty good crackle paste to uh, or paint to come through layers and layers and this really did work the buttercream crackle. If you're in Michaels just look for that product and uh, I'm sorry they probably do sell it at Michaels I haven't seen it there but Joann's is where I, I picked it up and it really did work for me but I wanted to make sure that this was really dry. I love the idea that when it crackled it left me with a big space of pinks coming through so you could see the under layer of pink and I was happy. This way you have the turquoise and we're going to begin the mixed media process and I'm happy. Yes. And I don't want to cover a lot of it with the mixed media pieces. And I'm going to tell you what I did. I went to my stash and I had a basket. And I told myself I wasn't going to create with anything but what was in this small basket. And you're going to be surprised. It's all the leftover pieces. Oh yeah. And all you have to do to get one of these three is leave me a comment. And the gift will be yours if I pick your name. And May 19th is the date. So Mod Podge, get out your Mod Podge. This is matte Mod Podge because I want to see through the, um, the netting. I just grabbed some netting and I put a piece there and a longer piece to the right. So uh, it's matte Mod Podge. And then I had a new bucket of, this is the funniest thing, of gesso. Okay, now I haven't done a mixed media piece for a while. And I took the bucket of gesso and I opened the lid, I stirred it because it's quite big. And I am using the gesso like it's mixed media paste, like it's texture paste. Can you believe it? And I'm wondering why is this texture paste so thin? <laughs> oh, what a day yesterday doing this. It was really funny. I'm just going to tell you because you're going to see me leaning over there. And you're probably thinking, why is the texture paste so thin? But it worked. It worked, even though it was thin. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't have texture paste and all you have is gesso, add baby powder to it. Just take it and put it in a bowl, little margarine, butter, whatever, plastic case that has a lid, bowl, and add baby powder to it to thicken it up. And you'll have a lovely texture paste from just simple gesso. There's my bucket. Look at that. I mean, really. And I'm using it. Like it was thick texture paste. I have a lot of it. It's not like I didn't have it. And I'm going, wow, look at how thin that is, you know? And I'm thinking, I hope it doesn't seep through. But it didn't. Look at it. It did haul up some of the green paint, but that's okay. I, you can deal with that. It's mixed media. You just cover it up. So uh, I didn't like that. That was too runny. And this is just so, remember. So I scrape it off come back to that there's no problem there if you don't like something scraping it off and adding to it especially if you have embellishments it works out well I put a few here on this corner trying to keep my numbers in for the larger elements in odd numbers but uh, I mean that's not something that's that important and um, now for blue fern I'm going to pick out uh, they have the most beautiful embellishments don't they and I saw this I think it's called ironworks I had two of them so I thought okay I'll use one and I picked out those flowers there as well 
and I took out some texture uh, medium so that it's gel so that I could use it as a glue to put down these elements. I you, plugged in the hot glue gun because I like to use that on flowers and things and I used uh, some of the Mod Podge so I went back and forth here I'm just taking the gesso for what it's meant to do and that's to cover up things for when I use my sprays the sprays I'll be using are the Tim Holtz Stains and Lindy Stamp Gang, mixing them back and forth. And I did not, because this uh, giveaway is going to be opened internationally as well as Canada where I'm from, I wanted to, I didn't want to put a lot of bulk and a lot of weight because postage is insane, uh, really crazy I can't even believe it you know so I thought okay that's why it's a flat canvas um, and that's why the embellishments are limited but I think on it if you have a lot of background if you have a lot of things going on I don't think you need to cover up what you like and I do love the um, you know just it just has the right amount of space that's open so that I can see the crackle. I love where I drizzled all that gray and pink all over, two tones of gray and one of pink. That looks beautiful. I love the emboss or the um, stencils. I think for something that has a background pattern like this does, I think it's nice enough to just add some interest and some prettiness to it but not over embellish I think it has enough when you uh, are preparing it here how uh, you know it's it's different if you're working on one color and then you want to fill it what you know with all the beautiful goodness of embellishments but when you've painted and painted and you have um, you know you have a clear section in the middle which shows the beautiful crackle and then you have the beautiful drizzles along the outside. I think it's just perfect. I'm really happy with it. And I get to cover that hole. You can't be any happier, right? Even if that hole wasn't covered, I would like it. Because it shows underneath. It There's just something uh, genuinely wonderful about a mixed media canvas. I can't explain it. You either enjoy it or you don't. I don't think there's any middle ground. I think you either, you know, it's, look at that. Look at that beautiful crackle with the buttercream. I love all that drizzled in there. I love the gold in the background. I wanted to bring that gold up. So I was looking at that blob up there and I thought my gold thread would be perfect. So I'm adding this uh, medium to glue it down and then I saw this little string. Isn't this funny? It got stuck from that old towel I have underneath. And then um, here's the gold thread. It's just fine enough. It's so pretty. So I just grabbed enough to make a nice circle up where that blob is in the right hand section. Then I'm going to grab the gold and gloss gel, any type of gel or mixed um, medium gel. Uh, that's what I just said. But any type of uh, glue substance to glue stuff down is great. And this happens to be gloss, but that's fine. Um, I don't think you're going to notice it. And I'm just putting it down. I'm grabbing a little bit of the other texture paste to make sure that this stays and doesn't come up. And I really like the look of a whole lot of gold thread to match that beautiful uh, gold we put in the background on the black. I do have uh, the three things that I'm going to give away. And um, when you leave a comment, you just have to say hello. And then if there's a particular one you like, if you like this canvas or you like the card or you like the uh, wave picture, the canvas card, just let me know. It kind of gives me an idea of, um, you know, what people like what. And maybe I will make three different sections to choose when I put your names in the bowl and pick one. You know, I could separate it for those that like the canvas, those that like the card, and those that like the other one where it's the 
beach scene with the wave. So uh, I left the pictures at the end so you know what I'm talking about here. So now I am going over everything to make sure it's nice and dry, especially the thread and the hearts. And then I'm going to apply the gesso afterwards. It works either way. You can do it pre-gluing uh, or you can put it after. It doesn't matter. All that does is help you uh, adhere any type of spray, paint, whatever you're going to put on it. And uh, yeah, I just think it's coming out wonderfully. And I do like the fact, I think this would have looked nice, by the way, if I had left it pink. Either way, I'm very happy with it, and I think the winner will be as well. When I take the sprays and I put the, to go on top of the flowers and all of the embellishments here, you want to make sure if you don't want that color on your flowers, I never look at color. I know I can apply the gesso, cover it up. I'm using the hot glue and spray it with whatever color I want. So. Really, these flowers would have looked nice with the red underneath, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, so I never, when I'm putting embellishments on a canvas, I see past the color. Aw, oh, look. me I have to put some silliness in my videos once in a while well more than once right I'm always adding it because you know when you have a long video let's face it it's a long video and if you can break it up and just have a smile or two I think it helps so um, I really liked that little transition and so I put it in there and uh, so I took out yeah I took out a feather I don't know why I'm going so far away here Oh, yeah, come back. Come on, Carol, get back. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so I'm going over it with the gesso. Oh, yes, I like to twist the wire around whatever this paintbrush is what I use. Twist it around. I think it adds to the flower when you do it this way, right? And it was a lot of fun to have that basket. It was a tiny little basket I got at the dollar store. And every time I do a project, even cards, I put the embellies that are left over into this little basket and I told myself I'm going to use up that basket for my projects before I get into anything else in my stash and I'm telling you it worked out perfectly um, just every single embellishment was out of that tiny basket which was lovely I just I was really happy and I'm hoping the person that receives this will like it I think they're three nice you know, uh, giveaways. And because postal is crazy, I tried to keep it reasonable, you know, for me, and yet show appreciation for 10,000 subbies. I never thought I would see the day that I would have that many subscribers. So thank you, each one. And um, I look forward to many more in the future. I have a lot of projects planned, and I'm going to uh, pick the winners on my birthday, May 19th. Yes, I'll be 63. Can you believe it? Oh, where does time go? I tell you what, I still feel 62. <laughs> you thought I was going to say 18, didn't you? No, 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 no. Anywho, yes, I have these. Uh, I ordered these. They're cameos. It came with uh, an album and all of these cameo heads. I love them. See, you can kind of see in the corner there. I'm picking the right size. And I have these little uh, foam. Um, they look like grapes. I had those in the... See the basket off to the right, right there. You can see the size of the basket. At least you can see the color, right? So I'm putting on some of the medium, the gel medium. And in that basket, there was uh, a fabric piece right here with this that I use on lace projects that I haven't done for a while and uh, so I put it on there and I cut it out I just put it on turned it around and got as close as I could cutting the image out so it still looked like a face then I'm adding my mo oh hello hey you're gonna get glue in your paws 
See? I'm 62 years old and I act like a child. I just can't help myself. I will, um, yes, let's get back to my age. Can you believe 63? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I got to get that out of my mind. But you know what it is? You, I don't like the saying you're as old as you feel because that's not true. When, you, when you're up in age, you do have different creaks and uh, things that we deal with when we're just a little older. You know, our patience isn't the same. And um, yeah, and I'm not talking about if you're a doctor, your patience, you know, that thing that uh, used to be really long and then you find it shorter as you get older. Oh, yeah. And the same with creating. You, you're, I think I'm more relaxed creating now than I was maybe two, three years ago. I, I've kind of grown into myself. <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that, okay? Don't quote me on that. But I do enjoy it more. And I really like, now that I'm retired, I like to go up to my craft room and just create and have fun. And... Um, and I like hearing back from you, you know, if there's projects, seriously, that you would like to see me do, create, if you have a stamp set that you really like, and if I have it, and you, you know, there, let me just, I'm sorry I'm stopping, but there's the little basket. I'm going in there, and I'm literally picking out everything. So I put that feather down. I'm going to start into this, or I'll get yakking. I put the feather straight down. Then I put the image of the cameo down. And then I added some small flowers to that and there was this button and in that button there was actual turquoise. It was from Melissa Francis and I found this package I got from Walmart that says metal on the left there and it has the clock. Uh, that was perfect size and I put the silver button here and then I end up putting a silver gem. And you can see I'm going right in there and I did not waver. Sometimes when I do projects, you know, I'll say, oh, I've got this in a drawer. I've got that in a drawer. I'm like, no, I made up my mind. Whatever was in that basket was going on this. And I had some really nice stuff in there. So I'm covering it with the gesso. Even the metals, color it, cover it with your gesso so that you can spray it. And I had to go back with uh, the glue gun there because it was wet underneath from the gel medium it didn't stick so the i went back with the glue gun adding some more uh gesso so that my sprays will just adhere and not give me any problems i i decided to go over this just a bit so what you do what you can do what i did uh let's go like that I take a ton of water. I want that green on the edges of that material, just on the edges. Take a paper towel, rub it out, and then all of that beautiful paint will just go around the edges instead of having to edge it with a marker or anything. It, it turned out really lovely. And uh, you've got the fur, fur, I don't think feathers fur, but you've got the feather fluffing out there and uh, Whenever I think of it, I grab some gesso. Let me just say that I go back and cover things. And now I'm using just the turquoise paint. I'm going to cover everything because I'm going to come back with the pink and then I'll start the sprays uh, in no particular order. I do hope you are enjoying this process and leaving the other in. I hope that was helpful as well. And now we'll just move along and finish up. Now I'm going back into that little basket and finding all kinds of things. On the right there, I added a clear little uh, embellishment that I saw. I put it on top of the button. I thought it was cute. And I wanted to stay with the theme of pink and the turquoise. Then I add green. Um, this is the Melissa Francis button. You get six of them to a set really pretty and on the inside of the button with the gold the gold went really well you can see the turquoise I kind of bring it up there it's painted in there and then the crazy thing is I decided to try and put I was going to put some red roses 
because the cameo has red. See it up there? She has a red dress on. Now talk about an oxymoron, right? I go crazy talking about the red. I don't like it. And what am I doing putting a pink rose in there to match the cameo? I thought, what goes with cameos better than uh, really nice roses? And palette roses are gorgeous. You get the texture of the petals. And I was going to fill this space there. And I really liked it. But I thought, no, Carol, don't put roses there. I stopped. And I thought, take it off. Yeah, I keep working with it, trying to bring the red down and keep it to the pink tones. Then I wanted to put the flap. Much as I love this rose and I was going to put some more, I scraped it off and decided to cover it with bricks. <laughs> Woohoo! So don't forget, I'm calmed down now. Don't forget to comment. Just, uh, just a hello. Or which one of these projects you like more, you know, to receive the card, the canvas card, or this mixed media piece. And I'm serious, I really do love what I do. And that's why I get real excited. I mean, 10,000 subscribers, let me say it again, it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, so let's go over here and take some of the, I didn't want to waste this paint, so I'm just adding it all over this is what you do just add some texture wherever you like mixed media you can cover it up you can spray it you can gesso it and start again really it's up to you and then i took some of the white and i put it on to i wanted you to be able to see that netting that i put down so i just uh put some down there on the left corner and I filled the clock and the frame. I end up putting a frame on top of the face that's in the picture on the cameo. So I grabbed some glossy accents and filled up the frame so it looks like a picture. So many little details. You have to love details. And here's some white and pink going into the netting so you can see that. I, I like to see all of the work that you put in right if you can bring it out in any manner i think it's really really sweet and to add more i grab hold of my uh gesso <laughs> actually i think i used yeah i used my paint i remembered that now i added some hearts with the leftover paint i don't like to waste anything i think that's why i never throw out a project i always try to uh redo it in some way well, we're coming down to just about the finish of this video, and I hope you did enjoy. I'm going to repeat it, but I'm, I hope you like the idea of me keeping everything, like the whole process, in the tutorial. And I always say, if you, you know, if you find that 48 minutes is too long, I understand that, you can uh, just go to the end and, and watch it at another time. Uh, here's the Tim Holtz Inspire... Um, light bulb the clear I liked the see-through portion of this I liked the word inspire because that is the key word I keep in the back of my mind when I create my creations I want to inspire somebody to create and that's it in a nutshell you don't have to copy me just be inspired to do something in art it really helps to relax us now uh, this is the stains I'm going in with the golden and I use a lot of uh, paper towel because I don't want it full strength it's very light my colors are very light so I wanted to keep it that way but I did want to add some some greens some yellow and then just tap it off a little bit and so it pushes it back and it's not screaming the color when you look at the mixed media piece. Well, I'm softening it up with some of the gray that uh, stain from Tim Holtz. I sprayed it with, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I should know it. I use it all the time. But it's the deep kind of gray. So it will match all over. And um, yeah, I do the flower. That gray tone in the Tim Holtz spray looks nice over pink. I think it's really pretty. I like the heart there where I got two tones of uh, color. That was nice and I end up getting glossy accents and putting it around that heart that has the green and the pink over top of the flower 
and I'm just spraying it wherever I think. I even added purple, can you believe it? But you know what? Beautiful, it did. It just added that little bit of color that it needed. Now as we finish up, I wanted to add something on the brick there. I, I didn't want to add any more um, elements that were really bulky and I found this beautiful applique and it's feminine. It adds to the whole element on the brick. I mean, you know, leaves on the brick and like a vine. The Pretty Flowers 3D, I added some glue, hot glue actually, and um, it just, it's exactly what it needed. You know, just what the doctor ordered, as they say. I really did, I was happy right there. And uh, I do have the glossy accents now inside the clock drying. I do have it along the heart, as you can see. I put that on there. And I was able to knock three minutes off of the video as I was watching. So I edited it down to 45 minutes. That's not too bad for this video, I don't think. And uh, yeah, so here we go. We're just going to pounce on some of the turquoise. Uh, I'm going to add it to different spots that I want to stand out. I love, love, love the crackle, the way it came out on the whole project. You can see that crackle, seriously, on the whole project. Isn't it cute? I'm proud to give this away. And I'm still smiling. Yes, this project, I, I just... I adore it. I love mixed media. It makes me happy. It really does. 10,000 subscribers. I can't get over it. See the button up there? The glossy accents in the frame. I put that frame up there just to add some um, extra extra. I also grabbed that sponge and added a little bit around the leaves in green and turquoise together just so very lightly. But I didn't want to leave the applique total white, so I did put some, like, it depends on the angle. I can see it on the top leaves there, and uh, I am given to detail. I do take my time. When I feel the project is just about at a close, I sit back and I do exactly what I'm showing you here. I do a close-up to see, is this exactly what I wanted? Is there an element that, is it, there are too many elements? Is there another element I need to add to my project? And I, for about 10 minutes, I, I go over it just to make sure that I am satisfied. Because if you're giving something away, right, you need to be satisfied. And I'm going to sign it here with my gel pen. And I actually went over it with um, my white paint because I didn't think the gel would hold up. And it's nice and fine. I just put C held dash 17, dash 10,000, so that, you, you know, I would be reminded, you would be reminded if I watch this video in the future, that this was one of the three gifts that I would like to give away for my 10,000 subbies. I mean, I get it almost breathless thinking about that 10,000 people thought my work was, um, was good enough for them to press the subscribe button. That, to me, really, really means a lot. Yeah, really, 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 it does. So anyway, you have yourself a blessed week. Thank you very much for being a part of my 10,000 subbies. Enjoy, I mean, you are my subbies, right? Enjoy the close-up here, and I'm going to look forward to seeing your comments and putting you in to win. And uh, there you have it, my friends. I hope you like it. And I hope you learned from the beginning of it as well. Okay, we will see you on the next tutorial, my friends. Bye!